Hi there everybody, it's Chris here. It's time to go green, I would say. Um, today we're going to have a look at uh, the two different battery options that we have. Specifically for camping, because this is a, a camping setup. Uh, if you're looking at household batteries these days, you are pretty much set to do only lithiums. Um, for many reasons, uh, we'll go through it just now. But for camping purposes, uh, these are still... The, well, the two options that you have uh, when it comes to batteries. So firstly, this is the old style battery. It is a lead acid battery. Now, whether it says uh, VRLA, whether it says gel or deep cycle or semi deep cycle or any of those uh, phrases that are loosely used in the industry, uh, it still remains lead acid technology. Now, lead acid technology has certain disadvantages and um, not many advantages. If I look at the advantages, I can probably count it on one finger, and that is a smaller capital layout. So you're going to pay a lot less off the shelf for this battery than you would for a lithium battery. Uh, and it's the only, the only uh, benefit that you do get is just a smaller uh, cash investment that you do. Otherwise, in all respects, these batteries are old technology and should be phased out um, as we go. So what is the difference? If you look at the old, this is a 105 deep cycle or semi-deep cycle from Deltic. If you look at the old technology lead acid batteries, then you have to realize that it comes from crank batteries. Original batteries were used in cars engines, in the engine bay, and they cranked the vehicle with it. So when they expressed the power of the battery, it was expressed in cold crank amps. So how to cold crank an engine with this battery, this is how many amps it has that it can produce. And amps are very important because the starter uses a lot of the amps. So these batteries typically would be expressed as a 665 CCA, cold crank amp battery. And we've always converted the, the amps into kilowatts. Um, and that's why we talk about a 105 amp hour deep cycle battery. So it's 105 amps for one hour or 105 hours for one amp. So that is how we express the capacity. Um, the real way to express capacity when you're looking at storage is kilowatt hours. Uh, kilowatt, the rate at which work is being done, uh, kilowatt is what you are looking for. All your devices that you use in your vehicle, your fridge, all of those things uh, use watts as an expression of, of its energy and not amps. So a high cycle battery, which is your crank battery in your vehicle, looks the same as this one, but it's not the same. It is meant for explosive power. So the plates inside, is the lead plates, are very thin, and they are there to produce a lot of amps briefly, and that is it. The moment you start discharging it deeply, the plates get stressed, and they start bending and buckling. And then you get dead uh, shorts on the inside and you get dead cells uh, on the inside. So a normal car battery doesn't like to be discharged deeply. So what they did with this battery was to make the plates a little bit thicker. And a thicker plate means that it doesn't bend that easily. And if it doesn't bend that easy, you can draw the, the power down even further. So you can draw it below 50% if you wanted to. It is not a good idea on a lead acid battery to drop it below 50%. Whether it's a VRL A battery, a gel battery, semi-deep cycle, deep cycle, whatever you think you've got the best of the best, if it's lead acid technology, it has the same issues. It doesn't like a deep discharge. Typically, your uh, discharge of a battery would be rated at a C20 rate. So that means if I take a 105 and I discharge it over 20 hours, I will get my 105 amps. But if I discharge this battery overnight, over 8 hours, then I'm not going to get 105 amps. I'm going to get less. Because a lead acid battery has that as one of its characteristics. It just uh, mimics a smaller battery the higher your uh, current is. So this big battery uh, could look like a small one like that if you're drawing very high currents from it. High currents is winching, microwave, uh, things like that. If you're just running one fridge of one battery, you should get your C20 rate more or less, which means a 105 is a 105, 
but you only have 50% available and that's 52. Um, and that is lead acid technology. Uh, lead te acid technology is the old technology and as I say the pros you can count on one finger and that is the price on the shelf. That's the only thing that counts in its favor. Let's look at the lithium batteries. This is a lithium iron phosphate. Um, this is the newest, it's not very new, but it's the newest technology for general purpose use lithium batteries. Very similar to what's in your cell phone, your laptop, things like that. It's almost the same as you find in Tesla. Uh, the Tesla vehicles uses a different type of technology, but it's still lithium. Um, but it's not iron phosphate, it's um, a different type of uh, material that they use for their batteries. So their batteries are more expensive, a little bit better, but lithium iron phosphates are reliable, they are safe, and they are the way to go. So for us in the camping industry, this is what is going to be our future. And the breaking point where the cost per kilowatt energy that this battery could do in storage has now become more expensive than the cost per kilowatt hour that this battery does. And uh, therefore, the switch is being made currently. Since about six months ago, a year ago, depending on where you buy it, um, this battery has become more cost effective than a lead acid battery. If you do the calculation, then you will end up with how many rands you paid per kilowatt storage. And if you take that rands per kilowatt storage and you compare it to this, this has now become cheaper. So over its lifetime, this will be cheaper in storing your energy than this one will. The second point is the weight. Uh, the lithium batteries are very light compared to this one. I'm not going to even bother to pick it up. And the reason for that is the battery, although it's a black case, this case is lead plates with a liquid or a gel or glass mat on the inside and it's basically uh, submerged the, the lead is submerged in the liquid so it's a flooded battery this battery comprises of a bunch of small cells like you would have a double A for your torch or something this one comprises of a bunch of them packed in here very tightly soldered together with a battery management system on the top and encased in a black case. So if you cut this thing over, open, there is no acid inside. It's just a series of small batteries. But these batteries are all lithium ion phosphate and therefore you get your lithium ion phosphate big battery. It looks like one big battery but it's actually a lot of small ones on the inside. Uh, it can handle the camper's abuse. I've never seen a camper uh, use a battery the way it's supposed to be. If you use the semi-deep cycle from Deltec, you should only um, draw power at a rate of C10, which means that in 10 hours I will draw this battery down, and that means 10 amps. 10 amps times 12 is 120 watts. That is a fridge. Anything more than a fridge, you're busy abusing your battery. Um, so winches and microwaves and inverters, you are abusing the battery. So you're shortening the life dramatically. Uh, so that C10 rate is very important and then overnight the fridge is running the beers have to be cold we put some new stew in it that we didn't finish so it has to be cold for tomorrow and before you know it uh, this battery is on the red lights so if you see a red light flickering this battery is already taking damage because 50% uh, discharge is the maximum that you want to take this battery down to 50% for, for a lead acid battery is a lot. A, a lithium ion phosphate battery can go down to 10% and it will cut out because it's too low. And then you recharge it and if you recharge it then it's back to normal. It doesn't know the difference. You do get less cycles if you take it down deeply for many times. But the abuse that this battery can take is a lot more than this one. So are you going to damage this battery quite easily? Not as easily as lead acid. So campers abuse, these batteries are really good for campers who abuse their batteries, which is all of us. It is built to fit in a 105. So if a 105 comes out of the box, you can take this one and you drop it in there. This is the 108 from Blue Nova, 1400 uh, watt hours. 
So it's a, it's a nice powerful battery with good storage. You can draw it down to 90%, which means this battery as it stands here is almost double the capacity of this one. If you can draw this one down to 50%, you can draw this one down to 90%, you basically have two batteries in this one itself. Uh, the battery can handle high currents and it keeps the voltage high. So you will see if, as you discharge your battery, the voltage doesn't drop, drop, drop all the way like the lead acids. It remains fairly high for fairly long, which means your cables don't take a lot of strain with low voltage and high amperage. So what are the cons of this battery? One of the negatives of this battery is off the shelf price. They are expensive. These batteries at the moment sell around 10,000 Rand, 11,000 Rand for a battery, which people think is crazy and it's a lot. If you treat this battery properly and you draw it down to 50% as you would with this one, you expect 20 years life versus at the same discharge, this battery will probably give you three years. The second negative with lithium ion phosphate is that it cannot be charged at low temperatures. If you go below zero, you have to start looking out for charging this battery. It's better to disconnect your, your charger because the battery does not like to be charged at low temperatures. If you discharge it a little bit, then it will generate a bit of internal heat, which will um, negate that, that highly negative numbers on, on temperature and then you can start charging it again. It's not going to damage if it goes below zero, you just don't want to charge it below zero. Now most of your lithium chargers, uh, the intelligent lithium chargers, will have a temperature sensor connected to it and it will recognize that the battery is below zero and it will refuse to charge. And that's why it brings me to the third negative of this battery and that is that it requires specialist equipment for charging. Now Blue Nova has built this battery to just replace a normal Deltic or a normal 105 lead acid battery. So you can just pop it in and it should work. The two things that you should not do is one connect it straight through to your alternator. When this battery is empty and it demands a charge and you give it free access to your alternator, it will work your alternator too much and it can damage it. So do not connect it straight to an alternator. The second thing is it doesn't like the hot temperatures of an engine bay. So if you had a 105 in the nose of the Hilux and it was sitting there in a nice spot where you're saving a lot of space, you cannot put the lithium in there. You are going to damage it. The temperatures are just too much. This battery wants to be inside the vehicle, behind the seat, in the boot, in the back of the bucky, in the canopy, um, in an ice box, protected and connected. And if you have good charging equipment, this battery will give you uh, use for 10 years plus, uh, quite comfortably. And not just that, it will be pain-free 10 years. Uh, if you have a lead acid battery, first year it does great, second year you start getting hassles. And you struggle, struggle for two more years before you decide that's it, I'm done, I'm replacing it. This one will not do that. This one will give you good service until it ultimately just conks out. So you expect to have good experience in camping and battery availability where you go. So I think it is the time to go green. It is the time to switch over to lithium. Yes, it's going to cost you a little bit more. Save a little bit extra before you invest in a lead acid. If you're not going to camp for many more years, then lead acid is going to be your thing because it's cheap and it's going to last you three years and then you're done in any case. But if you are going to camp for a while, invest in a proper battery and that would be lithium ion phosphate at this point in time. Thanks for watching and uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Send me an email, send me a WhatsApp and I can have a look at your questions. Otherwise, let's go green. Cheers.